Good afternoon and welcome once again to my daily chat. Shop plugged in, there we go. I was gonna double check afterwards for some reason. Uh, welcome to my daily broadcast. This is episode number 660, that's 660. The topic today is, are you, ladies, are you tempted? Is that ladies? I did say, are you tempted by snake oil selling coaches? I'll break that down in a moment. Before I do, let me choose myself so you know who I am and then we'll just get into the topic, shall we? My name is Barry Sovey. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Yes, 5 p.m. on the button. Oh, and by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, it was Facebook Live first, hence you don't know who I'm talking to because I'm interacting with people directly on Facebook. I'll give you the links at the back end so you can follow me there later on, if that makes sense. So before I jump in, let me introduce myself so you know who I am. Um, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, sometimes provocative speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is why I help women create balance in love, life, and business, and also why I do these talks every day, which are actually officially titled Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. That's what the title is, even though what MFTM stands for. And every day I do these talks at 5 p.m. Pacific time, and today we're up to episode number 660. And the topic again today is, are you tempted by snake oil selling coaches? I probably should have said, are you tempted, are you tempted by coaches selling snake oil, but you get the point. So um, let me jump into this and start talking about this. I did talk about this a little bit yesterday regarding a particular person who was talking about how um, her idea of, she, she called it something like the goddess pussy can heal narcissism or something like that. It was a very convoluted thing. But I want to speak more generally now because I'm realizing that not just in the area of relationships, but in every area of coaching, there's a lot of bullshit, <laughs> to be totally blunt. And what I'm very aware of is as a consumer or as a user or as a client or tentative client, it can, be, it can be hard to separate the wheat from the chaff, if you know what that term is, meaning hard to, hard to separate the um, value from the crap. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it, I think. And so I want to give you some th pointers, some ideas, and some illustrations, perhaps, depending on what comes through, that can give you some clarity and some direction of where you want to go. Um, this, by the way, is one of my weekend broadcasts, hence the casual attire, and also probably the shorter broadcasts because they usually go shorter on the weekends. But that's never pos never never consistent. It sometimes changes too. Um, so let me jump into this. So enough wasting time. Let me see what's on, let's see what's on the horizon in my awareness to bring forward to you. So as I said, there are very diverse people doing various diverse things in coaching that may offer value or not and I want to help you clarify that so it could be in the area of like a, the area I'm in which is the area of love and relationships which also includes the area of dating sex tantra there's a whole gamut of people who are in the same general vicinity I am in this work then also other areas of focus people put into which may be health and wellness maybe it's a diet program or it's an exercise system or it's a new nutritional product there are also people involved in the financial arena how to create more money invest more money make more money save your money that sort of stuff there's also career coaches, people who help you get invested in your new business. There's a range, as you can tell. So one thing that's common to all of them, at least I like to think so, is that anybody who is hanging out their shingle of what they do in the world and what they're about has, ideally, a journey that got them there. They didn't just go one day and go, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be a health coach and I'm going to hang out a shingle for doing health coaching even though they've got no experience that doesn't make sense but some people do that additionally some people actually take a course to become trained in some modality and have the certification for that but still have no experience with it and they'll hang out the shingle and become a coach and teach their stuff frankly I'd advise you to steer clear because as you can tell from what I'm saying there's no depth there's no there's no experience there's no there's no um What's it, history? There's no, there's no value there for them to really deliver from. See, the thing for me is that those people I work with as coaches, when I'm a client, are people who have walked a path that I can verify and also have life experience that I can refer to and trust and go, I believe these people. Now, some of those are going to believe on faith because I haven't actually walked the journey with them for the last 20 years or whatever they're in their life. Like my clients working with me, I've been on this, I've been on this personal growth journey since the mid-80s. So that's over 30-something years. Most people haven't walked that path with me. Some of my friends have, they know my journey, so they can actually speak to that. But most of my clients just know me from the last two weeks or six months or two years. So 
they're learning from me is really from what they can trust in the way I speak and where I come from and what I teach. So they go, yes, I can believe that. So any coach out there has to be, first of all, believable, but not necessarily convincing because there are some people out there who have a really good patter. Um, hi, Sydney. Sorry, you just popped in, but you can relate. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you can. This is not, I don't think it's my own experience only. This is definitely out there in the, in the wild. And I've, wor I've looked at working with some coaches who I've since found out, thankfully without investing money, that they were charlatans. They were fakes. They were snake oil salesmen. That's the thing I was getting to the term about snake oil. They were selling something that I didn't believe in. I've even looked at some network marketing products, MLMs, if you know the term, multi-level marketing products. They were supposed to be the next best thing. It's, it's going to be the, it's going to change the world. It's the best thing ever. And it was real snake oil. It didn't have any value. It was, in fact, there are two companies I was working with going back in the day that have class action lawsuits against them because their products were crap and their market model was bad as well. Moving back to coaching, because the same thing applies to coaching as by some of these products, is that sometimes the marketing hype is way more impressive than the delivery of what they bring. And I shared this yesterday, it's like, and I'm going to say it again today because I can be totally proud of this. My website sucks. <laughs> and my website is extremely clunky at the moment. I'm, about, I'm looking at revamp, revamping and redesigning it because it does look very old fashioned, because it is old fashioned. But all the products on it and all the things on it are very real. But the thing is, as a presentation, it can look pretty weak, just to be transparent. I'm just being honest about that. Because I've actually had people go to my website and then shy away because they didn't think it looked that good. But the thing is, my work is not about web design. My work is about what I present and what I teach and what I bring. Not that I'm using it as an excuse. I know I need to invest in some web design upgrades. That's going to happen. But the reality is for me is that in my coaching, it really is about what we experience together and we work together. So if you watch my videos, or if you read my book, or if you use any of my programs, or if you coach with me, you'll, my, thank you, Mary, my, per, my personal personalness, I'm not sure, I think I know, I know what you mean, but I don't know if that's a real word, is it's very important to you. Thank you for that. I appreciate that, Mary. So, rewind slightly. So even though my website may look clunky, everything that's on it has impact and value. And if you watch my videos on YouTube or on Facebook, or if we've met in person, I kind of think you get who I am, because that's really the truth of my work. And so for me, this experience, thank you, Mary. I appreciate the impact. My videos are excellent. I appreciate that. But for me, it's very clear that a lot of people have a, lot, have a barrage, that's a pretty good way of putting it, a barrage of marketing. Okay, that just dropped in. Let me talk about this for a second, just sidelines somewhat. As I said, I'm in the area of relationships and, rom and dating and love. There are many people in this arena, and I've been invited onto many summits where a summit, in case you're not sure, is a gathering of experts that are interviewed either on phone or, or video, mostly video nowadays, to be presented in a sort of 10 day or two week span. Some of those summits I turned down. Some of the summits turned me down, just to be honest too, because my list, because a lot of these summits are designed to build your email list. And my list is still pretty small, so it's not big enough to fit on those summits, which is fair enough. But some of the people who I was being invited to be on the summit, I so got clear how they didn't have any value. I'm being real about this. There's some people out there who market summits and bring all these experts in, but they themselves are not an expert. They're doing it to build their email list. And this is, by the way, this is just stripping down the, um, the curtain. You're seeing behind the curtain now, just how some of, these, some of these summits work. The person leading the summit has no expertise, or very little, but they want to build their email list to be able to sell their products, which is one reason why I've been very reticent to lead a summit, because that feels inauthentic, although, to be honest, a lot of the work I do, hang on, hang on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I gotta say this. Okay, <laughs> I've been looking at putting, I've actually looked at putting Summit together the last couple of years. I haven't done one yet, partly because it's a lot of work and two, because I didn't feel it was a real value. However, just to re be reflecting what I just said earlier, but other people doing summits, I know that what I bring to the table outshines many of the experts that I would bring onto my summit. And my expertise, even though, and this is the thing, and yeah, I'll get to that in a second, okay. And I'm also clear that my work is more important than my list size. Because what I'm aware of is some of these summits, and in fact, it's funny, interesting, because a couple of summits actually have me back again and again because they value what I talk about, independent of my email list size. And that's very humbling and also appreciated because I know the value of work I bring. And because my list isn't 5,000, 10,000 people, that doesn't have any impact about who I am and what my work is about. 
See, there are people out there who have email lists of five, 10, 15,000 who always get invited onto the summits. But the reality is what they bring besides that little half an hour chat is empty, it's void, it's all show, it's all um, sleight of hand. It's a presentation, but it's not real. And so that part of this whole coaching arena is a bit of a challenge for me as well. I'm saying it person, as a personal experience. It's a challenge because I can't invest in things either with coaches working I work with or with summits I want to be on if I don't see authentic, real expertise on the other end. And I would hope to I would hope to say that you would have the same experience. And I'm saying this as an encouragement that don't be willing don't just say yes to the first coach you meet unless they really are the real deal. There are too many and this is the thing I'm discovering more and more. I'd say all these summits have been invited to, and these people I've been noticing who are now relationship coaches. It's kind of crazy making to be transparent that all these people say they can teach about this stuff, yet their only expertise is they're in a good relationship that may have been two years old. Now, I've been single for, for mm, 11 years, 12 years now, and I'm being transparent about that. Thank you, Mary. I appreciate it. So, thank you for the information. I appreciate your research, and this is very helpful. I'm, I'm grateful that you found value in this. And it's something that, yes, thank you for that. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to do I'm sorry, two thoughts competing with each other in my head there. This happens to me, by the way. Being, being a man, it's hard to juggle two things at once. <laughs> As men, we're very good at linear. That's the whole masculine thing. I've talked about that before, the masculine and feminine. Masculine is laser focused. Feminine is more very wide, wide diffuse, can include many things. So I was juggling two thoughts. So one was responding to Mary, which I did. Second thought, which I was losing track of, it'll come back. <laughs> is ah, it'll come back it I'm sure it will this is the fun part of doing this these these were any script there's no planning ahead so what comes through comes through let me see if I can get it another angle all right let me just speak <laughs> I derailed myself in that one that was fun this paradigm oh yes there we go all these different relationship coaches are out there who have got no experience or almost minimal experience they may have an email list because they have held a summit and gotten emails from other because what let me back up a second so you know how a summit works mechanically this is a whole outing about summits a person hosts an, a web video topical summit about the area they're supposed to be coming an expert in or want to be building lists from they bring in 10 20 30 people who are experts each of them must have a minimum list size of 5,000 people according to the requirements now so I'll come back. To, all right, I'm going to hold on to that thought. I'm going to come back. Hi, Mary. Keep putting comments in. I'm trying to keep on my point. So you're, you're glad that I am a man and, you, and that you need my input. Thank you. You see from one's point of view and, and appreciate this, this sincerely. You're very welcome. Thank you for that feedback. And you know, I, I have lots of offerings and stuff that I do offer. So thank you for that. And we can talk later as well. Summit creation. I remembered. Good. Okay. So, so a summit host will have interviewed again 10, 20, 30 people who must have a list size of minimum of 5,000 people. Two things about that. One is their ideal thing is they're going to recruit many people from all those lists onto their own email list. This is to be transparent, which is really what it's about. Yes, you may get value from the summit and everybody offers free gifts so that way when you get the free gift, you get on the, their email list, the host gets all of them. That's the way it works, which is why a summit hosts do these is to create a bigger email list. The other part of that though, is that a lot of e people's email lists are not very responsive. So you may have an email, list, uh, well, let me do my own email list. My email list is under a thousand people. I don't know five thousand people, ten thousand people. It's under a thousand at the moment. It could change any moment. I know. <laughs> However, my response—certain of my response—the response I get from my email list is maybe higher than other people. See, if you got, yeah, if somebody joins an email, a summit because they have an email list of five thousand people, but only one person's opens their emails, that seems a bit incongruous. But that's the disparity about this whole thing. So I'm very aware, oh sorry, I didn't finish my thought about my list. My list, the opening rates are about between 15 and 20%, which is not bad, it's not great, but it's, it's good, it's above average, which is pretty good. What's that gonna do with, the, I say, what's that gonna do with snake oil? I'm just wrapping up the thought about summits. So anyway, so put that aside for a second. The quality of message, the quality of teaching, the quality of expertise that people bring isn't necessarily predicated upon the size of the email list. Whew, tied that together. <laughs> Let me get back to the other piece now. So my, my encouragement to you, my, my, in, my um, recommendation to you is that you, and I said this yesterday as well, so it's on the same theme, is we, you, you absolutely must 
do your due diligence, meaning you must do your research. You must, if you want to work with somebody, check them out, find out how they work, find out how they, you know, look at the testimonials and trust, uh, test, trust their testimonials are real, not made up because this happened before. I've seen that happen. Verify their experience. How long have they been doing this? What are they really about? Interview them. As I said before yesterday, if they don't offer you a free discovery session before you work with them, walk away. If their entry point is a $1,000, $5,000 program, walk away because you must get to know the person before you want to spend any money or time or energy or commitment. Because if you're paying up front without any knowledge, buyer beware. You want to be very clear about what you're investing in. That's a repeat from yesterday. So let me see if there's any fresh for today. The challenge is just as you could go into a store and be conv convinced by something somebody told you in the sales department that what they're offering is the best thing ever, then when you get it home, it's crap. You want to make sure that when you're working with a coach, the same thing applies. Uh, buyer beware, meaning buyer be careful. Do your research, check things out, learn about the person you want to work with and see if they really can stand behind what they do. Because they don't stand behind what they're teaching and they don't have deliverables and they can't prove they're that good, you don't want to waste your money. So in my case, just to toot my own home for a second, I have 600 and now 60 videos on YouTube and on Facebook Live and I'll give you the links in a minute where you can check out what I talk about to know if I'm speaking the truth and you can verify my message that way. You can also buy my book and read that if you want to find out more about my work for a much lower, lower um, entry fee. So a lot of things that you can do in my world before you spend any money at all. My, I offered a free discovery session, and I said this yesterday, a free discovery session as a requirement because one, I wanna make sure that you think working with me is gonna work. But secondly, I wanna make sure that working with you is what I wanna do. I'm being blunt because there are many people out there that want support, but I only have as much time in my calendar for so many clients. And if someone else be one of my clients, that's a slot I value. And I wanna make sure the person who signs up is gonna be doing the work. So a discovery session is a two-way street. It ain't just for you to find out about me, it's for me to find out about you, just to be totally transparent. I think I made my point. Do your research, be a wise buyer, invest where you find someone you can trust, and really learn about yourself in the process because you'll then realize who's gonna be a good coach for me. That's the other part, by the way. When you're looking at all these offers and all these invitations out there, be really clear if that really fits you or not, because you might find that what out there sounds impressive, sounds very tantalizing, and you go, wow, great idea. It's snake oil. Be clear that what you're actually looking at will fit your life, fit your, go your goals, and will help you get where you want to go, whether it's business, life coaching, health, relationships, any area. I will put the link in the comments, as always, for a discovery session, discovery session with me, so you can test drive me coach-wise. I'll put a link in the comments for my book because I did mention that. Um, and that I think is going to be it. I really want to make sure you get this point because I've become really clear that there's a lot of charlatans out there in, this arena, in the arena of coaching. And that snake oil is getting way too prevalent. It's too easy now to set up a website, better looking than mine, um, and market themselves without having the background to match it. So do your research carefully. And if you want to work with me, I guarantee you that I'll help you change your life. And that is something I'd you can take to the bank, so to speak. Of course, that sounds like a sales pitch. <laughs> Let's talk and we can talk about that more. But that's the thing. You've got to watch out for that slippery slope into the snake oil sales. I think you got my point. Um, I thank you for watching. Uh, again, I'll put links in the comments for my discovery session and my book just so you have the access and replays information so you know where to find me if you're watching on YouTube first. I go live on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby, usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time. I had a couple of days when I couldn't this last week, but always every day. Um, replays go onto my business page, which is Barry Selby, the author, and also onto YouTube. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. The playlist is Messages from the Masculine. And again, I've got 660 broadcasts you can watch. You can learn about what I talk about and really know if I'm speaking the truth. Um, with that, thank you for watching. If you want to share with anybody, please share it out. If you have any questions, please put them below and I respond when I sign off on either YouTube or Facebook. And uh, do your research. Take care of yourself. Choose wisely and have a great time. Thank you, Mary. I appreciate you being here. Thanks for the love and feedback. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.